a Tale of Any Era playthrough on hard difficulty mode. Uh, I'm Amwai Zhao, the maintainer of the campaign. Uh, this is the last level, Retribution. It's probably going to take us four or five videos to complete, uh, and it might take me more recordings than that, as I have previously finished it and then uh, been able, unable to upload the files or retain the save games. So here we are, the second attempt. Uh, in the bottom of this level, we have the Emperor. He's the ultimate aim. We're going to try and kill him. Uh, Lavinian Emperor, he's got two cronies here, one on either side of the river, and then we have an enormous forest, and up here in the north we have the seed. We have Athos, who we uh, rescued from Lavinian oppression a couple of episodes a couple of uh, episodes ago. That's not the right word, scenarios ago. Um, we've got the hero of old, who we met last episode, and we also have Phelan, uh, who's the boss. Except he doesn't get to recruit because uh, Vaniera won't give up the ch give, give up the controls. So, um, what I'm going to try and do here is uh, send some guys out to the west to uh, pick up some uh, pick up some uh, villagers, and the rest of our guys are just going to head south and fight all the Lavinians. It's going to take a long time, so yeah, we're basically this this level was going to take a couple of hours, I would suspect, um, and that's if I don't die. Um, if I do die, I will be able to show you the wonderful feature of Wesnoff, the ability to reload a previous saved game really quite easily, um, which is a feature that I use quite a lot because I'm not actually very good at the game, as I'm sure you've noticed by now. But anyway, we'll do our best to not resort, resort to that if we can. Um, I'm getting some auxilla here um, because they're quite handy to have because they're not going to be affected by time of day. You're going to see a lot of the effectiveness of time of day here and I'm going to have to spend a lot of time retreating my forces when it comes to um, when it comes to daytime. Uh, because I'm not very good at daytime and the Libidians are terrifying in the daytime. So, uh, yeah, you should get a bit more of an idea of how seed tactics actually work and how this game might work a little bit more in multiplayer where you're actually going up against a faction in a long-term battle where you've actually got to beat the other team um, much more so than we've seen in the previous levels. It's really just been warm-ups for this. This is, this is the real game now. Real game with a little bit too much volume, yeah. Uh, the enemies here, pink and blue, are going to take a very long time to get across the river, so we're going to want to try, if possible, to inflict a bunch of damage on the green guys before their buddies get to them. The first night is really going to be critical for picking up some quick damage uh, without the enemy having a chance to retaliate. That's why I've sent some of our more high-powered units out south here straight away, as well as some auxilla there. They're the backup for when everything goes horribly wrong. So I'm going to try and bait these guys into the forests as much as we possibly can. I also have a uh, an additional motive for sending that wanderer down there, but I'll explain that when it happens. All these hidden secrets you get to find out about when you play with Amoisel. I am going to recall one of these fighters just because I'd really like to get a unit with leadership if I possibly can. That's the only way the Seed can do that. I'm not sure it's going to work for us, but leadership is a handy ability to have, and if we can, we're going to try and keep that warrior alive. Also, they probably do a little bit more damage than Auxilla and they're not that much more expensive. Um, the big difference between the two is that the time of day differences and also that Auxilla have no upkeep cost. I don't know if I really actually explained the idea of upkeep cost, but basically, um, if I haven't, each unit costs a certain amount to keep in the field. Uh, level four units cost four upkeep. Uh, level three units cost three upkeep. Auxilla are level zero units and therefore require zero upkeep, despite the fact that they're actually quite powerful. Wow, those cavalry, they're... 
Sure are a lot of them. So that's going to put my Tempest out of the game for a little while. But, you know, it's still daytime. I didn't actually realise there were so many cavalry there. They don't normally recruit so heavily. Still, she lived. We got a little bit lucky there, so um, we didn't immediately need to restart the game, just losing a level 3 unit because we're dumb, so... That's good. We've got a bit of a problem with Athos here because we want to keep him alive. We'd love to feed him some experience if we can, but we don't want him to die because as soon as he does, we can't. We lose the auxilla. So, I'm going to be a little bit more careful with him as if he was a leader type unit. Wow, won't die, huh? How desperate are we to kill that archer? Not very desperate. Let's not worry about losing some units to do it. Although we have already put Fail in somewhere dangerous, given that he's our only remaining high level unit, maybe that wasn't the wisest thing we've ever done. care about any of those guys. The Forefathers are particularly great in this level because um, they have good movement and defense on the water. They don't care what kind of terrain they're on, so therefore when they're on the river and everyone else gets sort of bad, bone, bad uh, disadvantages for being on the water, you can see these legionaries are moving mighty slow. Um, we The ghosts aren't affected by that. Also, uh, we are playing, in case you hadn't noticed, on one Wesnoth, uh, Wesnoth 1, 11, 16. We've had an upgrade since last time we were playing videos. Uh, luckily, the save game still works, so that's nice. But it also allows us to do this little zoom out thing, which is kind of funky. Hey, that's a good auxiliar right there. Good boy. He's going to die, but hey, support the counts. And we're getting into the night time, and we are going to annihilate these green guys just before the pinks can get there. That's... It's ideal. Yeah. Now, I was talking earlier about how there I had a an extra reason for bringing these guys down south, and that reason is that if you get down close to the river, you'll trigger an event. Yes, you'll trigger the hippos. Hey, we finally use the hippos. Um, so that's good. We get some enemy hippo units in the river, which is handy just because we get them there now, then hopefully they'll come out onto the land and we can fight them where they're not excellent in the forest. Uh, sorry, in the in the river. So a um, bit of a cheat mode there, but anyway, we'll take it. We need all the help we can get. Not much to say here, except those poor green guys are really sort of out of their depth here. Uh, in the night time, anyway, they can't really face us, so... 
we'll take take advantage of that and kill them off as much as we can and then uh, we're probably what's this first watch how much can we get away with hard to know we'll see if we can do a little bit more damage before we start running Now, it's always, in this level, difficult to know what to do with Vaniera. As it is, I think I'll take him back so that he can recruit when we've got enough gold to do that. That's a bug. Got to look at that. The uh, forefathers getting defense that's too good on the forests. Sure, I fixed that. So yeah, you spend a lot of time in this level, particularly in the early parts, waiting for the blue guys to get across the river. And the pink guys to some extent. You can see when we're fighting against legionaries like that, it's a good trade. It's when they start using their pylons like that and slowing our guys, particularly when we're trying to retreat back again, that we start really not liking fighting legionaries. Um, there's a the in the Ageless era, which is one of the other eras of uh, Wesnoth, They've um, actually removed that ability on the level one uh, legionaries, and I must say I quite like the idea, but I haven't been able to bring myself to do it yet, just because it's so much part of how you play as legionaries is this balance between trying to slow units and trying to do a lot of damage to them, which I really quite like. You can see those hippos mean that green's turn takes quite a long time and they don't do a whole lot but they're a little bit devastating if you meet them in the, in the ocean. Okay, so we're going to need to start moving back just a little bit, falling back to a more defensible position because come the, uh, come the daytime we're not going to want to be fighting legionaries. So I sort of use Phelan here as a bit of a tank. Ooh, um, to sort of use him to soak up a bit of damage so I can get some experience in the, some of the other places. He's got so much more health than a lot of our other guys, it's really quite handy. Oh, go on. No, not. It's hard to resist a legionary looking that damaged. Okay, let's see if we can... Since we've got a few spare guys, let's drop a couple out this way, see if we can't grab something back off these guys ah, I didn't realize I had my hero still excellent should have used him first Okay, things are going alright here. Pretty happy with that, but you can't really speak until you've got, um, until you're surviving daytimes as the seed. If you're, you know, it's all very well to be doing great in the night time, but unless you're still alive at the end of the day, you haven't really achieved much. Yeah, so we have sacrificed that ghost there, ghost there for a legionary. Um, the forefather costs 20 gold, legionary costs 19, so probably not an excellent trade. Um, there, especially since the, I really don't have that much gold, but uh, you never know, he might live. They, no, he won't live, There's, he's, he's trapped. Um, they're surprisingly hardy though, because they have excellent defense. In fact, that particular gentleman has defense far better than he should. He's got 70% on the forest there. Um, I 
think I know what's causing that bug. I'll put that down on my little notepad while I think of it actually. Right, so it's getting to daytime. Um, we, I mean, it's very tempting to go in, smack, slap at these guys for a bit, but we're not gonna. We're gonna fall back to some more defensible forest terrain and wait it out because there's nothing quite like getting your entire army destroyed. It's not fun. You'll notice that I'm pushing back to the second line of forests. It's pretty unusual for Wesnoth tactics there. Um, the reason I'm doing that is that. Uh, uh, the legionaries are so bad in the forest, I really want to get them into the forest, which is really unusual type of tactics. Normally you want to stop your opponents getting in that defendable terrain. Might just wait there, I think. Normally they come on a little bit harder than this, but not, I'm always glad when they don't. We did do a lot of damage to those green guys early on. We were very successful, very lucky there. What we don't want to do is fight a bunch of guys at the same time we're trying to deal with the hippos. Auxiliary. Hmm. So it looks like the first line of pink guys, um, mostly their cavalry, are going to be the guys we're going to have to try and destroy first in the daytime. Um, that's okay because they're they're neutral, so it's not like they're getting huge bonus fightings in the daytime much rather fight them than some some uh, some legionaries. I'm sorry for that noise in the background, that's our neighbours just running their cow for hours on end. They're not quite sure why they do that, but they do. It's probably something you're supposed to do with cars, I don't really know. Hey, our Tempest's back in action. So I'm just trying to think of the best way forward. <laughs> Situation that's going to put my good units in the least danger. Oh, not a level up there. tempting to sort of flow down the, uh, the western side here, but I don't think it's a good idea. Normally I just run a big defensive line over here in the east and leave a couple of quick units out there so I can take advantage of empty villages if we get the chance. And I think I'm going to keep trying to do that because it's just a little bit easier than the alternatives. Um, also, if I don't have much force there, the enemy hopefully won't send much force there to oppose me, um, which is always good. Here come those blue guys. We want to be really, if at all possible, in this next coming night time, we want to be trying to deal some real damage to the leaders of those blue teams because they're minis. They just, a few, a few of those level 2 units will be capable of pulling our guys apart. Hippos, and they do a lot of damage, but they, they will be... Uh, 
less of a problem just because they're so they're really not designed to be fighting on the on the, on the planes. Should actually maybe I should think about putting a little bit more water in this level for them. Mm -hmm. I don't tend to mess with the maps much, and um, almost all the maps in the Imperial era are still exactly as they were when I took over, um, just because it's not really my, not really something I'm very good at. Tempest is danger, da damaged again, how's that keep happening? Okay, so this is the situation where we start throwing Oxida away, putting him in, putting him in sort of compromising positions. Can't get that guy killed. There we go. Um, when you're playing the seed, or when you're playing any sort of m army where you don't have overwhelming force, you really discretion is the better part of valor. Sometimes it's better just to just to retreat a little bit and wait for the favorable TOD and go after them. And when you're particularly when you're playing sort of chaotic versus loyal or loyal versus chaotic, the time of day is such a significant change. I really don't want to start going after Lavinians in the afternoon. Okay, here we go, dusk. Uh, so we're 10 turns in, it's dusk, we've survived the first day. I think that's an excellent time to um, call a bit of a hold on this, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll call it a break for now, and that's the end of part one.